we present three important truths that reveal that God's will is to heal and deliver. God is not the author of sickness and disease. Get ready to receive your healing. This morning, I just want to uh, share a very simple message with us, uh, bringing our attention to the fact that the God we serve, the God of the Bible, is the God who heals us. He's the God who makes us whole, physically, emotionally, and in every way, every area of our lives. This is the God we serve. This is the God of the Bible, the God who heals. And so towards this, I just want to share a few thoughts uh, that will encourage our faith, encourage us to receive. Uh, some of us may have come here this morning with the expectation that God would heal us in our bodies or our minds or emotions. Uh, some of us may have loved ones that you want to pray for this morning specifically saying, God, uh, so and so, they're not here. They may be in a different city, uh, but you have brought their name and say, God, I want that person, that loved one to experience your touch. And so uh, we want to encourage your faith so that we can pray together towards that. The God who heals. Now, one of the things are often the thing that really hinders us from asking God or believing God uh, to heal us are the misconceptions that we carry in our minds and our understanding. Misconceptions, the wrong ideas, the wrong notions uh, that we have about God. And sad to say, sometimes these misconceptions have been formed in us because of what we've heard preached to us. Hopefully it hasn't happened here. <laughs> but some of the misconceptions that we have about God have actually been taught us from pulpits. And we've heard them. And we believe them without necessarily examining it for ourselves in the scripture. And saying, is this really true? And so we carry these misconceptions with us. And these are the very things that hinder us from receiving from God. And we're talking specifically this morning, the area of healing and wholeness and deliverance. That means for us to be healed physically, emotionally, and in every area of our lives. And so I want to deal, I want to address uh, two of these misconceptions this morning. Uh, and just present biblical truth. In, the, in relation to these things. There are two common misconceptions that many people carry in them. One is that God is the one who makes us sick. In order to teach us a spiritual lesson. Now that's the spiritual side to it. God has made me sick because he wants to teach me some spiritual lesson. Now what? These are the very ones who would be first in the doctor's office. So there is inconsistency between what you believe and what you're doing. Because if you really believe that God is the one who made you sick in order to teach you something spiritual, your right response would be, God, bring it on. <laughs> Sorry for being a little sarcastic, but I want to shake you up this morning. You know, if you really believe that God put that sickness on you in order to teach you some spiritual lesson, then what your response should be, please give me some more so I can learn more spiritual lessons. And you should refrain from going to the doctor. But this is a misconception. Many believers carry that God has put this sickness on me in order to teach me a lesson. Oh God, what is, what is that lesson? A second misconception many people, many believers, God's people carry in them is that God may heal me if it is his will. But you can never know for sure. That's a misconception. So why do you say it's a misconception? Because, you know, just take it in the natural. If somebody who has passed on, has left a will, and in that will, she stated clearly, uh, this property goes on to my daughter. 
If the daughter goes around saying, if it is my mother's will, I will receive that. What's your response going to be? Hello, read the will. <laughs> Just read it. What does it say? It already says she's left it for you. So be happy. Go take it. The will already states. It's yours. And God has given us his will. It's written here for us. There's no more and there's no place for ambiguity in this matter. Read the will. What does it say? But many of us still having read the will. Still continue to pray like this. Lord if it be your will. Heal me. I don't know. That's a misconception. So in order to deal with these two misconceptions this morning. We're going to present three simple truths. To deal with this. To address this. And, and you just listen to these simple truths. They're nothing complicated. Very simple. We're going to talk about, first of all, the revelation of God's nature. What did God reveal about himself to you and me in the word? Concerning healing, wholeness, deliverance. What, was, what did he reveal? He's already revealed to us. And what did he reveal? Second, we're going to deal with the revelation of Jesus Christ. When Jesus walked the earth, what did he teach? What did he preach? What did he say and do? And third, the revelation of God's promises. And we're going to present them just in, in the light uh, of these two misconceptions. To deal with these two misconceptions. So number one. Let's talk about this. The revelation of God's nature. You see when God brought his people out of Egypt. Where they were held in bondage for 400 years. He brought them out. They crossed the Red Sea. They saw the, their enemies annihilated. They crossed the Red Sea. They began their journey towards the land of promise. After a few days, they came to this place where they found pools of water, but the water was difficult to drink. It was bitter. So they cried out, God, you know, please help us. We're thirsty, we need water, but these waters are bitter. So God told Moses, Moses, take a tree, throw it into the waters. And when Moses did that, the bitter waters became sweet. This is in Exodus, the 15th chapter. And at that time, God said, Moses, tell my people, don't be afraid of any of the diseases you saw come upon the Egyptians. Don't be afraid. Because I am the Lord, Jehovah, your physician. This is who I am. I am Jehovah Rapha. The Lord, your healer. Just look at the whole context. He turns the bitter into sweet. And he says, tell them to forget. Don't be afraid of all the things that they saw come upon the Egyptians. Because I, for you, am your Jehovah, Rapha, the Lord, your healer. This is who I am. And throughout scripture... Especially the Old Testament. The Lord intentionally revealed himself to his people through what we call as Jehovah titles or Jehovah names. So there are 52 of these. Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Nisi, or Jehovah Jireh. We're familiar with many of these. Each of these are a self-revelation of God. God disclosing a certain aspect of his nature to his people. So this is who I am. I'm just revealing something more of myself to you. It's a revelation of his nature. And God always says and acts consistent with his nature. Because that's who he is. He said, I am Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord your healer. I am the Lord who will be a physician. So God always acts consistent with his nature. He's not going to say, this is who I am, and then do exactly opposite of that. Are you with me? No. He would be consistent with his nature. That's how he acts. 
he says and does, always consistent with his nature. And so uh, we, we need to understand this is who our God is. He's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer, the Lord our physician. He makes us whole physically, emotionally, and so on. Now just think about this. As uh, these people journeyed to the wilderness, and we don't know the exact number, but people estimate 3 million people. They estimate 3 million people journeying through the wilderness, journeying on into their promised land. God has promised, I am the Lord, your physician. See what happens to these 3 million people. This is the record. Those days, for this migrant population, for this displaced people, there were no refugee camps. There was no Red Cross. There were no medical camps paying, giving them attention. There was no medical aid being flown in from the nations. Nothing. They were left to themselves. But there was Jehovah Rapha. What happened? Here's what the Bible records, and I'll point you to certain scriptures. Let's try and read them out aloud if you can see the screen. Psalm 105, verse 37. Let's read it. He also brought them out with silver and gold, and there was none feeble among his tribe. There was none feeble, weak, sickly, faltering, halting, none feeble among all his tribe. Not one. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 21. Let's read it out loud. For 40 years you sustained them in the wilderness. They lacked nothing. Their clothes did not wear out and their feet did not swell. Now where did they get these designer clothes <laughs> that didn't wear out for 40 years? Shoes didn't wear out. Their feet did not swell, meaning they were in good health. Forty years, God took care of them. This is what the scripture testifies. Jehovah Rapha, taking care of his people. Now, they did at different points in their journey. Uh, they did things that God told them not to do. They disobeyed them. They got into trouble. But whenever they turned back to the Lord, they cried out to them. And God delivered them. Here's what Psalm 107 verse 20 records. Let's read it out loud, please. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So when they cried out to God, what did he do? He sent his word and healed them. That's why the word is so important. That, that we, as we proclaim the word, we believe that God will do the same thing today. He did that. He sends his word. He heals. He delivers. He rescues. He changes lives. Amen. He sent his word and he healed them. He delivered them from their destructions. And so as these people settled in their land of promise and they continued, they continued to engage with God as Jehovah Rapha. And so you, you see even in the Psalms an expression of their confidence in who God is and their recognition of his nature. You read Psalms like this, and I want you to read these verses with me. They are familiar to many of us. Psalm 30, verse 2. Let's read it. This is what David said. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you healed me. That word healed, the same word Rapha, that God used uh, uh, to describe his own nature. God said, I am your whole Rapha. And David is saying, Lord, you were Rapha to me. I cried out to you. You healed me. Psalm 91 well-known psalm. Let's read a few verses from them. Let's read verse 9. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Now think about that. The psalmist is saying, because you've made God your refuge, no evil will befall you. No plague will come near your dwelling. Now look at the confidence with which he's talking. Talking about God. Say, this is the God we have. This is the God we believe in. That if you make him your dwelling place, no evil will befall you. No plague will come near your and we'll just jump to the last verse of that psalm, verse 16. This is what he says. Let's read it out. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Wow. This is the confidence they had in God. And if you make him your dwelling place, 
he will satisfy you with long that's what they expected he will satisfy you with a long life and he will show you his salvation psalm 103 is a very very dear psalm to many of us we we'll just read two verses verses two and three let's read it out loud bless the lord O my soul and forget not all his benefits verse three who forgives all your iniquities who heals all your diseases he's affirming God is Jehovah Rapha. He heals all our diseases. They're affirming the nature of God. He's the God who forgives all our sins. He's the God who heals all our diseases. Amen. Now somebody might say, you know, but that's Old Testament, Pastor. So what do you mean? Think God retired? After the testaments changed, he said, sorry, my name is no longer Jehovah Rapha. I'm changing it. No. The Bible says, Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, God says, I, let's read it. I am the Lord. I do not. I don't change. Times have changed. Testaments have changed. But our God has not changed. He is still today Jehovah Rapha. Why can't you and I, as believers, acknowledge Him the same way uh, these people in the Old Testament did? And their expectation was very clear. If you make the Lord your refuse, no evil will befall you. No plague will come near your dwelling. With long life, He will satisfy you and show you His so that was their expectation. This is Jehovah Rapha. And God hasn't changed. Maybe our expectation of Him has changed. Maybe our understanding or, 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 or our thinking of Him has changed. But God hasn't. He's still Jehovah Rapha. So that's the revelation of His nature. He has not changed. And so you and I need to come to that understanding. Say, God, you are the Lord, my healer. And therefore, this is my expectation. Just like the Bible tells me, I believe that you will heal. You will keep me in health and strength, body and mind and soul. And I'm, I'm absolutely convinced who my God is. Number two, the revelation of Jesus Christ. There is much that the Lord Jesus came to do when he came into this world. But one of the things I want to point us to is that he came to reveal God to us. The Bible is saying like this in Hebrews 1 and it, it begins to say this, you know, God who in times past had spoken to us by the prophets has in these last days or last times spoken to us through his son. It's like God is saying, guys, if you didn't understand one word of what my prophet said, all right, I'm going to come down to you myself. So I'm coming to you. In these last days, spoken to us through his son. And that passage in Hebrews 1 continues. And I'd just like to read us to read a portion of verse 3 from uh, the Passion Translation. It's up on the screen. Let's read it. It says, the sun is a dazzling radiance of God's splendor. The exact expression of God's true nature. His mirror image. Think about this. Say, Jesus is the exact expression of God's true nature. So do you want to know what God is really like? Don't look at Job. Job is good. But don't look at him. Don't look at Joseph. Don't look at Abraham. Don't even look at Paul or Peter. If you really want to know what God is like, look at Jesus. So don't base your theology on Job. Base your theology on Jesus Christ. Because he is the exact expression of God's true nature. This is what God is like. This is who he really is. Just look at Jesus. 
in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, reiterates the same thing. Let's read it out. He is the divine portrait, the true likeness of the invisible God. He's the divine portrait. You want, I have a picture of God. So where is it? Right here, the New Testament. This is the portrait of God. You want to see God, see Jesus. The divine portrait. So in the context of healing, of wholeness, of deliverance, how, what did Jesus say? What did Jesus do? Because everything Jesus said and Jesus did would be an expression of the nature of God, the purpose of God, the will of God. Because he is the exact expression of God's true nature. So every word he spoke, everything he did is an expression of the nature of God, who God really is, how God deals with that situation. What would God say concerning that? It's a true expression of that. So how did Jesus deal with sickness and disease? How did Jesus deal with people who came to him with emotional problems and demonic possessions and things? Like that? What did Jesus do? How did he deal with that? Now, I don't want to be, you know, I, I don't want to be rude or mean. I do want to make some statements just to shake us up. First, never in the Gospels do you find Jesus telling a single person, saying this. If it is God's will, you will be healed. If it is not, learn your lesson. Do you find Jesus telling even one person, one sick person, that statement? How come today's preachers preach that? And they do it in the name of Jesus. And Jesus is saying, boy, I never did that. But today's preachers, they may have PhDs and DDs after their name. And they are saying... Exactly opposite to the true expression of the nature of God. So whom are you going to believe? The preacher with a PhD or the son of the living God? You make your choice. Do not one sick person did Jesus ever make this statement. If it is the will of God, you will be healed. Otherwise, please hurry up and learn your lesson. No. Never. Secondly, to not one sick person, Jesus say, if it is God's will, he will heal you. There's no question about that. He never questioned the will of God concerning healing, concerning deliverance. But today we have many preachers preaching, if it is God's will, he'll heal you. Never did Jesus pray, when it came to healing, you never find Jesus praying, Oh Father, if it be thy will, heal him, otherwise take him home. Never. He never prayed like that. Am I saying the truth? You don't find Jesus praying like that when it came to sickness, when it came to disease, when it came to deliverance. He never prayed like that. If it be thy will, Father, heal him. But how dare you and I pray like that? You're not following Jesus. You say, but I was taught to pray like that. Well, forget what you were taught. Follow Jesus. Are you listening? Follow Jesus. Do it. His way. He is the true, exact expression of the nature of God. And never did he pray, Father, if it be thy will, heal. If it be thy will, deliver. If it be thy will, make whole. Never. He always said, be healed. Be made whole. Why? Because the will of God concerning this matter is already established. It's already known. God has said, I am Jehovah Rapha. Don't question. This is who he is. Are you listening? 
this is what the scripture records for us. And, and, and I'm just speaking a few scriptures from the Gospels. Matthew chapter 8. Sorry, uh, before that. Um, Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. Yes. Let's read it out. Just a few examples from scripture. Let's read it out. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. But can you imagine if Jesus had to do this, if they had this whole line of people, and Jesus had to say, it's God's will to heal you. For you, it's not God's will. Come to say, it. it's God's will to heal you. For you, come after three days. God's will will change. After three days, you'll get healed then. Imagine how ridiculous it would be for Jesus to do that. And he never did it. What does it say? They just brought the people. Many means he just brought them in. No qualifications. Just, just, if you're sick, you qualify. Come on. And it says he healed them all. Matthew 12, verse 15. Again, I'm just giving us a few references here. Let's read it out. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there. And great multitudes followed him. And he healed them Luke 4 and 40, verse 40. This is what Luke records of the previous incident. Let's, this, is what, this is what he says. Let's read it. When the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to him. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. Now think about a health insurance plan like this. That had all, any, various Everyone, sign up. Today we have so many disclaimers. If you're above age, so much, sorry. If you had pre-existing conditions, sorry. If you have tested positive for this, sorry. But look at Jesus. Any, everyone, various, what else? Uh, all, come, you qualify. And heal them. Deliver them. This is the expression of the exact nature of God. Are you listening? So we've been given misconceptions about God. God has been misrepresented to us. And sadly, by people in the church. And so it's very difficult for us to believe God for healing. Because we have embraced these misconceptions. And today when we say, believe God, you'll say, but I was told sometimes he heals. Sometimes he's on vacation. No. Forget what you were told. What did Jesus do? That's the exact representation of God to us. Amen. Now, there was one person recorded for us who probably was way ahead of his time and he was like us today this was the leper we read about him in Matthew chapter 8 verses 1 2 and 3 it says here verse 1 when he had come down from the mountain great multitudes followed him verse 2 let's read it please and behold a leper came and worshiped him saying Lord if you are willing you can make me clean this is exactly how many of us pray so I say he was way ahead of his time. <laughs> oh, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me. He was not questioning God's ability. And none of us question God's ability. What we are questioning is, is God willing and do I qualify? Two doubts. Is God willing from his side? Am I qualified? Maybe I'm not spiritual enough. Maybe I'm not holy enough. I don't qualify. Maybe I didn't pray enough. Maybe I didn't read my Bible enough. So that's that element of doubt. How did Jesus respond to this leper? You read the next verse. This is how Jesus responded. He said, let's read it. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him saying, I am willing to be cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was so like, forget your doubts about my willingness. Don't question my willingness. I am willing. So he came. 
He was questioning, Lord, I'm not really sure if you're willing. If you are willing. Question concerning the will of God. Jesus' response was, I am willing. I want to tell you, that's how he will respond to you and me today. If we have questions concerning the will of God, concerning healing and deliverance, that's how he responds. I'm willing. Be clean. Be made whole. Amen. So concerning this matter, let us not have any element of doubt on who God is, his willingness to heal or his power to heal. And you know, this continued in the early church. Can you imagine a, a, a congregation uh, where newspaper can report this about us? And this is what Acts 5 verse 16 reports about the early church. It says, let's read it please. Also, a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits. And what does it say? And they were all healed. So Jesus has ascended. He's gone into heaven. But it's the same thing is continuing through the church. Multitudes of sick people, those tormented by demons, they're coming to this church. And the record says here, they were all healed. Every one of them. What has happened to the church today? We've been robbed by the untruth we've been preached to, preached, have preached to us. That's why you don't find it happening in the church today. The theology of today has robbed the church of the power that is supposed to be in the church. Are you listening? So we need to just go back to the Bible. What does the Bible say? And say, God, we want that. We want what your Bible says. Now, somebody may say, you know, eh, that was for those times. It was for the Bible times. People needed it at that time. Today, we have doctors. We have hospitals. Now, thank God for doctors. Thank God for hospitals. They are partners with us. Because we are working together for wholeness. We are working together for healing. So we are not against doctors. My wife is sitting here. She will not. <laughs> she, you know, so we are not against doctors. We are not against hospitals. We are not against that. But here's the point. Times have changed. People have changed. But our Jesus has not changed. He's still the same. He's still the same. Bible tells us, and you know this verse, Hebrews 13 verse 8, you know, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed. The Jesus of the Bible, the Jesus of the Gospels is the Jesus of today. And the church has one responsibility to represent him accurately. Not to misrepresent him to the people. No, don't misrepresent Jesus. That's a dishonor to him. Represent him accurately. Say what he said. Do what he did. That's our responsibility. And we can say with confidence that Jesus still makes healing available to all, to many, to everyone and anyone. Who comes to him in faith. He still does that. Because he hasn't changed. Amen. Now the last point. If you've been sleeping through all of this. Just, just wake him up. <laughs> the last one. The revelation of God's promises. You know every promise of God. Is a revelation of God's. Let's say that together, please. Every promise of God is a revelation of God's will. Now, let me hear you. Let me hear that there's some life in you. Come on. Every promise of God is a revelation of God's will. One more time, please. Every promise of God is a revelation of God's will. 
I mean, it's very simple. If God promised it, it means he intended for you to have it. It's not that God promises you and then says, uh -huh, I'm just teasing you. That would be ridiculous. Friends may do that to each other, but not God. God said, well, I really didn't mean what I said. You know, I actually meant something else. That's a theological twist, which even God has to figure out. <laughs> but God just meant what he said, and he said what he meant. That's all. So if he made a promise, it means he intended for you to have it. Don't question it. That's his will. That's why he promised. I want to point it just to two. Concerning this matter of healing and deliverance and wholeness. Number one, the cross. The cross is for anyone and everyone. The cross. Everything Jesus did on the cross is freely available to any person and every person who will come in simple faith. Everything. And we believe that. We preach that. Now we believe that on the cross, Jesus bore all our sins, the sins of the whole world. He took your sin on the cross. When he died, he paid for your sin, and he was buried, and he rose up again. He's alive today, and we announce boldly, anyone who believes in this living Jesus, your sins will be forgiven because the blood that he shed washes us from every sin. Now can you imagine? If someone having heard you state that came forward to say, I want to be saved. And then you say, well, maybe God wants you to stay in your sin for you to, to teach you a lesson. Would you ever say that to somebody? No. Or would you say, well, maybe it's not God's will to forgive you your sin. Would you ever say that to somebody? We would never say that. Because we know the cross is for everyone and anyone. You come in simple faith. It's for you. And the moment they pray, what will we say? Your sins are forgiven. Be happy. Be cheerful. Rejoice. Your sins are forgiven. Because you have believed in Jesus Christ. Now why is it? When it comes to sickness. Now the Bible says this. Isaiah 53, 4, Matthew 8, 17, 1 Peter 2, 24, the Bible says, He took upon Himself our sicknesses and our diseases. On the same cross. Isaiah 53 is the same chapter. The punishment to bring us wholeness was upon Him. Same cross, same punishment. By His stripes we were healed. Same Bible that says his blood washes all sin. Now says his stripes heals every sickness. Same Bible. But why is it now? When a sick person comes, we say, it may not be the will of God for you to be healed. How could we dare say that? Because it's the same cross on which Jesus bore our sins, that he also bore our sicknesses and diseases. The cross is for every person. All that Jesus did on the cross is available for every person who comes in faith. Amen? Well, if you agree, please say amen. Second one, one last promise and we will pray. This is a word to the church. James is writing to the church, to believers. And here's what he writes in James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. And notice the words he uses. Verse 14. Let's read it together, please. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Verse 15, and the prayer of faith will save the sick, 
And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Whom is he speaking to? Is anyone sick among you? He didn't say, if anyone who has been reading the Bible for seven days continuously, and if you are sick, you can call. He didn't put any qualifier to it. He just said, is anyone sick among you? Call for the elders of the church. And then he says, the prayer of faith in the name of the Lord may save, sometimes will save, 75% chances. No. Will save. The word save is sozo, the Greek word. It's a, it's a comprehensive word which includes, you know, sometimes translated save, heal, deliver, victory, preservation, protection. All is included in that word. So that same word can simply be translated heal. And it is translated healed in other places. So the prayer of faith. Will. Prayer of faith in the name of the Lord. Will save the sick. Will heal the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if you have committed any sins, it will be forgiven. Look at the language. There is no element of maybe, might be. No. It's nothing like that. Are you with me? And this is a promise to the church. To you and me. This is what the church is supposed to be doing. What you and I are supposed to be engaging in. There we go. Pray in the name of the Lord. Now, don't worry about the oil. The oil is just to help somebody. There's nothing magical about the oil. It's a witch oil, palm oil, coconut oil, olive oil. It's not about the oil. But it's the prayer of faith. And it's the name of the Lord. That's all. And that's something all of us can do. Amen. But look at the promise. Is anyone sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. Amen. So I want to, you know, in closing here, I want to just present these three statements here. The revelation of God's nature. The revelation of Jesus Christ, the revelation of God's promise, what we see in these things, make it absolutely clear to us that God's will is for you and me to be healed physically, emotionally, in every area of our lives, regardless of what the sickness is, regardless of what the cause of the problem is, regardless of what happened. God is our healer. We need to come to that place of confidence and that when we pray today, we pray with that absolute confidence. God wants us well. He wants us healed. He wants us whole. And he's ready to do it. The only thing he says for you and me, and we need to know, is we receive by faith. That was the only requirement, Jesus, only thing Jesus responded to. Two blind men followed Jesus and he asked them this question. Do you believe I'm able to do this? They said, yes, Lord. And he told them, according to your faith, be it to you. And we know that story about the woman with the issue of blood. What did she say? She said, if I touch his garment, I will be made well. Now think of a look at her statement. So positive. If I touch his garment... I will be made well. No doubt. She didn't have these things in her mind saying, I might be, I will, you know, it might happen. Let me give it a try. No. If I touch his garment, I will be made well. That was it. That was her faith. And you know, when Jesus turned around to her, he didn't say, Oh, daughter. Who told you to have that kind of faith? Daughter, that must have been really risky for you. No. He said, daughter, your faith 
has made you well. Go in peace. Are you listening? That's Jesus. That's the real Jesus that we should pursue. That's the real Jesus of the Bible. He responded to faith. Simple faith. But faith that had the conviction that if I touch, I will be made well. So I want to challenge you and me as believers from today onwards. We have no right to pray, Lord, if it be thy will, heal. We have no right to pray that way. So why? Because Jesus didn't. And whom are you following? Very quiet. <laughs> Follow Jesus. Say, so Lord, you are my healer. By your stripes, I have been healed. My God forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. That's who my God is. With long life, he will satisfy me. By his stripes, I've been healed. The punishment that makes me whole was upon him. That's our language. That's what we believe. Amen. So this morning, we're going to take some time to pray and uh, believe God to heal us, deliver us. And uh, I just want to divide our time of prayer. First, I'm going to call out a few conditions that I just felt the Lord put in my heart while I was standing there. I'm going to call those conditions out. And, uh, and if you have that, we're going to just pray right now for that. And we will take testimonies. Uh, then we're going to, I'm going to lead us in a, in, a, in a prayer, a corporate prayer, where uh, we will pray the prayer of faith or our own selves. And I want to encourage you to learn how to pray the prayer of faith. Yes, the scriptures tell this call for the elders of the church. But there are other places where the Bible says these signs will follow those who believe. Meaning it's for every believer. Yes, as elders, we have a responsibility to do this, but every believer can do this. All right, so as I will lead, second, we will lead people in a prayer where we will all pray together, whether it's for yourself or maybe it's for a loved one who may not be here. Uh, they could be at home, uh, they could be some other place, but you bear their name up and say, God, touch this person. I'm extending my faith for so and so, uh, for their healing, uh, for their wholeness, for their well being. And let's believe in our God. He is Jehovah Rapha. He hasn't changed. Amen. And thirdly, after we close, we'll have our leaders here, uh, our, our ministry team. So some people uh, may want to personal pray. And that's, see, God heals in many different ways. So don't get locked into the method. It's not about the method. It's the fact that he is our healer. Right? So uh, there's, God says we can lay hands on the sick and they will Recover. The laying on of hands is another way to minister healing. and that, So we will have our ministry team here uh, up. And you may want to come and have hands laid on you and prayed. That's another way to do it. Now, I want to make it very clear. We are not against doctors. We are not against medical help. We are not against what physicians do. We believe we are a team. We are working together for the same purpose. To see wholeness and wellness in the lives of people. So what we encourage you to do is... Uh, after the time of ministry here, uh, you know, some conditions you can instantly say that you've been healed. Like the woman with the issue of blood, she felt, she knew in her body, you know, things had changed. So she could testify right then and there. So if you can do that, then we encourage you to come forward and give a testimony. Uh, this is not to glorify man, but we are just shouting praises of our king. That if God healed you right here, right now, you can tell it. You come forward and you testify. Now, Otherwise, you may need to go back to the doctor, go back to the physician, get them to check you out, let them do the test. You know, God's miracles will stand medical tests. So don't be afraid of that, right? We encourage you to do that. Go get yourself checked, or if you've prayed for somebody and uh, somebody else, encourage them, you know, go to the doctor, get checked, and let the doctor ver verify. Here's your report. This is what you had. I'm telling you, you're perfectly fine. And that's a good thing to do. Amen? So if you need to go back, uh, take, take time to check your healing or take time to get your, go to the doctor, get checked, and share testimonies. The testimonies are not to elevate us as people or elevate the name of a church. The testimonies are to glorify God. So share a testimony. Send an email, 
uh, uh, send it across to the church e email ID and we will share it for the church. We won't give people's names out if you don't want that to be done. We'll just share it. This is what God did so we can all rejoice together. Amen? All right. Our worship team, why don't you come up here? I'll just be ready. I'm just going to call a few conditions out. And, and if you have that, you just stand up where you are and we're going to pray for the healings of those specific conditions. doesn't mean God doesn't want to heal other conditions. It was just certain things that I was felt here while I was standing here during worship time. And that's why I'm just going to call those conditions. The first thing I want to call it is if you had a shooting pain in your right leg, going up and down, your, or a pain on your right leg, uh, what I felt while standing here was a pain. Now, I don't, I don't have these pains normally, but I have a, a shooting pain in my right leg just going all the way down to my heel. So if you have that kind of a pain, just stand up, please, wherever you are. We want to pray for you. God wants to heal you. So don't be embarrassed. Just stand up and uh, we will pray for that. The second thing, I, uh, okay, anyone with that, please stand up. On your right leg, a pain that goes down from your, you know, go down. I felt it right down on my, at the bottom of my feet. So if you have a pain like that, just stand up. Not to embarrass you, we're just going to pray for you. We're just identifying people with that condition. The second condition I felt was right there on the back of my back right here. So it'll be your upper back. There was pain there right around my, my vertebrae there. So if you have a problem right there, please stand up. And we will pray for you. So uh, right there, the back and the upper part of your body, right there. Um, uh, just if there's anyone here, please stand up. Anyone with that condition, stand up quickly. Just say, I'm receiving my healing. All right, stand up. The third condition, the third problem I felt right now while I was standing here worshiping God was on my left ankle. I suddenly felt a pain there. It is not, I don't have it right now, but while I was standing there, I received it. I felt God was just saying, you know, that's again another condition I want to heal. You have a pain in your left ankle ankle. I want you to stand up uh, whatever the cause for the pain on your left uh, left leg right down there in the ankle part of a pain. Just stand up. Anyone here please stand up uh, with that. Let me see your hand because I need to differentiate. Both of those with the left ankle pain. Just raise your hand. Wave your hand. Okay. Okay. So left ankle. The last one I want to pray for is what I felt was an injury in your eye. It was almost like a sharp object that actually hit your eye. I think it's your left eye. So if you had, and, and then from then on, it impaired your vision in your left eye. You, know, you may not be totally blind, but it impaired your vision in your left eye because a sharp object may have hit your left eye. Anybody with that problem, just stand up, please. Um, uh, anybody here? Uh, okay, I see that. Okay, that person. Anyone else? Left eye problem, something happened? Okay, anyone else? that can kind of a problem. I see even more person there. All right. So here we are. These are the people that I felt right while I was standing there, different things that came. So these are the people who are standing. Can we all pray for them? Right? Now, I want the rest of you, uh, you are believers. And Jesus said, these signs will follow those who believe. They will lay hands on those who are sick and the sick will Okay, so now I personally cannot go to all these people, lay hands, but you are a believer. I'm going to ask believers who are standing next to these people who are already standing. See, the reason God gives words of knowledge is God is saying, look, I want to heal these people. Tell them I want to heal them. Okay? So really the job is done. We are acting out in this service what God has already determined to do. Are you with me? So our job is very simple, actually. He's already said, I'm going to heal these people. So those words of knowledge. Our job is, okay, Lord, we will do our part. Lay hands, pray, get them healed. Are you with me? So it doesn't take a whole lot of faith. Just, just go pray with them, all right? So I'm going to ask uh, people who are around these who are standing. See, God has already said, I'm going to heal these people. I want to just go stand next to them and uh, put a hand around them. Stand with them, please. And I'll pray from here. You pray right there with them. Can we all do that, please? Just move around. Just go to them. Uh, get into where they are standing. A few of you just go to them. And we're going to pray. See, God has already said, look, I'm going to heal these people. Uh, we're just doing, uh, obeying God. We're just doing what God said He wants to do. And so we are going to pray with these people. And then, those of you stood up, as we are praying, I want you to please try to check. I understand that some conditions you will have to go back to the doctor and that's perfectly fine. But if there's something you can do right now, maybe, you know, maybe that vision is becoming clearer. Uh, then I want you to please testify to it, all right? Because we want to celebrate with you. We want to know that God has actually done that work here as we, as we minister to these people. And so if you experience a healing right now, after this, uh, I want you to just check 
And then uh, uh, we can get the mic to you. Just raise your hand afterwards. We'll ask you for that. And then you can testify. Can we all pray? All right. Jesus is our healer. All right. So just pray. Very simple. We're just praying. We're just obeying God in this matter. God is the healer. We're just workers. We're just working in cooperation with God. That's all. God is the healer. Not us. He is the healer. So we're looking to him. Jesus, you are the healer. And Lord, right now, in your name, in the name of Jesus, we lay hands on these people. In the name of Jesus, we declare their bodies healed. Pain and source and cause of that pain and discomfort and ailments, we command it to leave. Every spirit of infirmity, I command you to leave in the name of Jesus. Let there be healing in the left, le in the right leg. Let there be healing in the back. Let there be healing to the, the ankle, the left ankles. Let there be healing now in the name of Jesus. Let there be healing in the, in the left eye, whatever is injured, or whatever cause. Let their vision be fully restored. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed. And those of you who've got hands laid on them, just say, in Jesus' name, be healed. Be made whole. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, we're going to give you a few minutes just to check your body. If there's a way that you can tell that healing has happened right now, I want you to just wave your hand. Those of you who stood up, when we call out those conditions. If there's a way that you can tell you feel healed. Okay, don't do it for my sake or make, you know, this is, no, there's no pretense. This is, we want to be real. But if there's a way that you can tell healing has happened, genuinely, ra just raise your hand. We'll get the mic to you so you can testify. Okay? But don't make it up. You're not doing this to impress anyone or, you know, <laughs> make anyone feel good. If there's a way, raise your hand up. Okay, all right, let's just get the mics to them, please. Uh, let them say what happened. If there's a way you can tell something has happened, just wave your hand. So just quickly in two lines, two sentences. Please, Shirley, go ahead. This morning uh, when I was putting on my shoes, I had severe pain in my right leg. And uh, I felt it when I was sitting here. Mm. But now I, f I felt a crackle in my in While my you were feet. being prayed for. Yes, in my feet and I have no pain. Amen. God bless you. Let's hear from the other person. You may be seated. You feel that like God has done something for you while they were praying. Just share a little word. Yes. Praise the Lord. I am from Madurai. K. Meena Kumari from Madurai. Working in railways. Uh, last week I did a laser treatment uh, for my eyes. For the vision of left eye. Uh, still I was uh, feeling bad. I cannot see properly. And the joints also in the left hand. So two sisters prayed for me. Right side she prayed for my eye. And left side, she prayed for my joints pain. Now, really, I praise God that everything is gone. When sure. I pressed here, it was paining. After praying, it was gone. So Thank the, God. The pain in your hand is gone. Yes. Uh, uh, praise God for that. Is there any way you can tell about your eye? Is it, are you able to check your eye? Not only. I, I had a... Uh, when I'm coming, I put this glass also. Okay. It was something white. It was going on. Last two weeks only, I did this uh, okay. two... Uh, All right, you got the eye right. checked, and yes. God bless you. Thank, thank you for you, sharing. God bless. Anyone else? Anyone else? Did, did something happen here? Okay, let this uncle come on share. We have one uncle here. Um, something happened to you. You can tell that something happened to you right now. Uh, please. You can sit down and speak. No problem. Hindi. Hindi, 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 Uh, can you hold the mic a little closer, please? Uh, uncle, uh. Oh, my left, left hand, my bicep, 75 years ago, 75 years ago, his left eye was injured, and he's saying, Abhi Abhi Okay, take. God bless you, Uncle. Wow. <laughs> wow, amen. Anyone else? One more here. And one more at the back as well. Okay, let's. Praise the Lord. I actually had to come for testifying in the presence. I, 
I have had a sports injury about 30 years ago when I was a spin bowler. About 15 years ago, they have done a surgery about two and a half inch screws still there. And the doctor said uh, after two years when I asked him, we should have removed, but we didn't. It's okay. But it's happened almost a year I've been having this severe pain and I can't even raise my hand. And when I checked with the doctors, they said, you may have to undergo another surgery and we have to remove the screw because it is not possible otherwise because it may be giving problem. They said it must have moved. So I was a little bit worried, but we had so many other commitments, so we have been just postponing. I've come here almost four months back only to this church, and I was also in the church where they said, if God is willing, only then he will heal you. So I, I thank and praise God for it. Now, I wanted to come and testify this week, though it is almost a month I've been checking. So much small, small problems, pains used to be coming. Even coming before here, I had a little bit of pain here, but... My, I can raise my hand, I can even shoulder my, wow. I can do everything. There is no noise at all used to come. We used to come putt, putt, putt. I used to get frightened. And when I was praying for this brother, my hand pain from here to here completely got healed. I thank and praise Amen. God for it. Wonderful. Thank you. thank you. God bless you. One more, last one, I think. We will hear. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Vivek. Uh, so I had a sports injury about three days ago on my left eye. Uh, the cricket ball it wow. was swollen up for a couple of days. So when I walked in here, so whenever I look at the lights, I had a hazy vision and there was a bad pain on my left eye. So now I can say I've been healed and I believe I've been healed. Wonderful. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Vivek. Thank, Thank you for sharing. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? And see how simple it is. We just follow God and He does the work. Amen. So we thank God. Let's just give God praise for all of these wonderful miracles, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your work. Now, we're going to do two more things. Like I said, I'm going to lead us in a group prayer. So we can all pray together. Right? So we will all stand. And I want to lead us in a prayer. You pray for yourself. You pray for yourself. Or you pray for a loved one. Somebody you know who needs healing. Okay? They may not be here. Physically, that's okay. Jesus also healed people who were in absence. The Roman centurion came on behalf of his servant who was at home. Uh, the woman from Canaan, she came on behalf of her daughter who was at home. Uh, the nobleman came on behalf of his son who was back home. So uh, they, they need not be here physically. That's okay. Jesus is here and you are talking to Jesus on behalf of that person. Okay. For some of us, we need healing. So this prayer will be for yourself. But for some of us, it may be for somebody else who's, who's not here. I will just lead us in a prayer, the prayer of faith. You can pray the prayer of faith. It's very simple. Just pray in the name of Jesus. So we pray the prayer of faith. And as we do, I want you to expect. Maybe it's for yourself or maybe it's for somebody else. For their healing, their wholeness, their deliverance, their well-being. And just believe Jesus. He'll do it. He'll do it. So let's pray. Let's, I'm just going to lead us in a prayer. And I want you to please repeat this with me. Lord Jesus, I believe you are my healer. You took my sicknesses, my diseases on the cross. So that by your stripes... I am healed. So right now, in Jesus' name, I speak to my body from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. I declare, body, be healed in Jesus' name. Let every sickness, let every disease leave in the name of Jesus. Now, if you know what that condition is, speak to it and say, in Jesus' name, leave. For yourself, or maybe it's for somebody else. Right now, you just speak. It doesn't have to be a shout, but your whisper in the name of Jesus is powerful. Just whisper it, maybe over your own body, maybe over somebody else. In the name of Jesus, tell that condition to go, whatever that condition is. Could be a physical condition, emotional condition, could be a trauma, could be 
a chronic illness, whatever it is. Now let's speak to our minds. Let's say, in Jesus' name, I declare my mind, my, my emotions are healed, are whole. I am healed. I'm well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you that even as we pray the simple prayer of faith in the name of Jesus, According to your promise, the prayer of faith will heal the sick. The Lord will raise them up and sins will be forgiven. So thank you for doing this. For your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name. Everyone said, Amen, Amen. Thank you. Uncle is saying I can read without my specs. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, wonderful. Wonderful. God bless you. God bless you. Wow, wonderful. All right, any, anyone else? Has something happened to you right now while you're praying? Just raise your hand up. You can, you can say like, I got healed right this very moment. Something happened to you right now. While we were praying, we prayed a simple prayer. Anyone? Okay. No pressure. All right. We are going to get ready to close. I'll also call our police, our, 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 our ministry leaders. Life group leaders, please come to stand here. And uh, we will close with a with song. Uh, life group leaders, you can come make yourselves available. Ministry leaders, make yourself available. Before we close, one very important thing. While the healing of the body and the mind is important, we also believe the most important thing that can happen to any person is for them to be born again. To receive eternal life. To have their sins forgiven. And to have their names written in God's book of life. That's the most important thing. For you to be saved eternally. And so if there's anyone here this morning, you have never received Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord, as your Savior, I'm going to lead in a simple prayer. And if you've never done that before, just join with me, pray with me, and receive Jesus as your Lord, as your Savior. If you've never done this before, please pray this with me. Let's just do this together. Just say this with me, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive my sins. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. And help me follow you. The rest of my life. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Anybody you prayed this prayer with me. For the very first time today. That you received Jesus as your Lord. As your Savior. For the very first time, I just want you to raise your hands so we could celebrate with you. Anybody, you pray this prayer with me. For the very first time, I see one hand. God bless you. Anybody else, you pray this prayer with me. For the very first time, just raise your hand. Uh, if you keep your hand lifted up, our greeters will come very quickly to you, give you a, a, a packet, a bag that has some resources in it. And there's a card that says decision card. Could you please write your name and number on that card so that somebody from the church office will call you and guide you how to use the resources in the back. Anyone else? Pray this with me for the very first time. Okay. God bless you. We're going to sing and then uh, I will dismiss and then we will sing this song and uh, slowly we could leave. Uh, but our uh, call our life group leaders, our ministry team, please come be available. And if you need personal prayer, please come to any one of them. They will pray with you personally for your need. It could be for something else. I know we focused on healing, but some of us may need prayer for some other area of our lives. Uh, just believe God works through each one of His people. So as they pray for you, believe that you'll receive. I'm going to pronounce what we call as a benediction, and then the worship team will lead us in a song. Uh, during that time, just worship Him, and then when the song is over, you're free to leave. Uh, those who need prayer, please come forward and receive prayer and ministry. 
uh, from our leaders here. Let's close. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, TV programs, publications, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, please visit apcwo.org slash Bible College. Please remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the app or Google Play stores.